Welcome, welcome to our worship for this Sunday, the 3rd of July. Whenever you're watching this, wherever you are, you are very welcome. Let us worship God. constant love, God of unending grace, God of the outcast and the prisoner, God of the powerful and powerless, God of all. We join in worship this day in this building and in our homes, giving thanks for your presence in our lives and for all that you have done and what you have made us to be. God who supports, God who challenges, God who sees our whole selves, not just that which others see. Speak to us today, shine the light of your wisdom into our lives and guide us towards service of you, each other and the whole world. God in the good times, God in the bad times, God in every pain and in every triumph, we bring to you our confession that we do not always live up to your hopes for us or to our own abilities. In silence, we each bring to you our own prayers. Though the challenges of life and of faith may be great, we stand before you, assured of your forgiveness, grace and love. And so, with confidence and thanks in our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake, Amen. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. 
The king of Aram had high admiration for Naaman, the commander of his army, because through him the Lord had given Aram great victories. But though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he suffered from leprosy. Now groups of Aramean raiders had invaded the land of Israel, and among their captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. One day the girl said to her mistress, I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. So Naaman told the king what the young girl from Israel had said. Go and visit the prophet, the king told him. I will send a letter of introduction for you to carry out to carry to the king of Israel. So Naaman started out taking as gifts 750 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. The letter to the king of Israel said, with this letter, I present my servant Naaman. I want you to heal him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read it, he tore his clothes in dismay and said, this man sends me a leper to heal. Am I God that I can kill and give life? He is only trying to find an excuse to invade us again. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard about the king's reaction, he sent this message to him. Why are you so upset? Send Naaman to me, and he will learn that there is a true prophet here in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house. But Elisha sent a messenger out to him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your, skill, then your skin will be restored, and you will be healed of leprosy. But Naaman became angry and stalked away. I thought he would surely come out to meet me, he said. I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord his God and heal me. Aren't the Abana River and Farpa River of Damascus better than all the rivers of Israel put together? Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned and went away in a rage. But his officers tried to reason with him and said, Sir, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he says simply to go and wash and be cured. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as the man of God had instructed him, and his flesh became as healthy as a young child's, and he was healed. This reading is from Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 11 and 14 to 17. Jesus sends out his disciples. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them on ahead in pairs to all the towns and villages he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is so great, but the workers are so few. Pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send out more workers for his fields. Go now and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among the wolves. Don't take along any money or a traveller's bag or even an extra pair of sandals. Don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Whenever you enter home, give it your blessing. If those who live there are worthy, the blessing will stand. If they are not, the blessing will return to you. When you enter a town, don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide you. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve their, the, deserve their pay. If a town welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you and heal the sick. As you heal them, say the kingdom of God is near you now. But if a town refuses to welcome you, go out into its streets and say, we wipe the dust of your town from our feet as a public announcement of your doom. And don't forget the kingdom of God is near. Yes, Tyre and Sidon will be better off on the judgment day than you. And you people of Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you'll be brought down to the place of the dead. And then he said to the disciples, anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Peace be with you. Let that sink in for a moment. 
peace be with you. God's peace that passes all human understanding is with you in whatever of life's experience you are at. In the midst of anxiety about your health or that of a loved one, peace be with you. In the midst of grief, bereavement, loss, hurt, peace be with you. In the midst of the fearfulness for the future, the uncertainties about job security, finance, the well-being of family and friends, peace be with you. For those wondering about exam results, yours or your children's or your grandchildren's, peace be with you. Those upset about things around the community, around the church and wider society, peace be with you. Peace be with you in the midst of your concerns for Ukraine, South Sudan and the other corners of the world touched by war. Peace be with you. Jesus sent 72 men out in pairs with a twofold message. Peace be with you. And the kingdom of God is near you. Messages right at the heart of the gospel. Messages that the world needs to hear, that the world longs to hear. We've heard recently of £65 million being pledged by the Scottish Government to aid in Ukraine. May there also be peace, our peace, shared in the midst of that quite appalling inhumanity. How the world needs peace in the midst of a cost of living crisis. How the world needs peace as we continue to navigate Covid and it seems to be on the increase again. And as we look at the news, the newspapers and our screens and our social media feeds, we hear countless stories of violent anger, relationship breakdown, lives touched by the absence of peace. How the world needs that message of peace and the peace that the message might lead to. Jesus spoke of those 72 and their peace. It's not just God's peace, but it becomes the disciples' peace, our peace. What a great place to be able to begin to look deep within ourselves for that peace, that transforming peace in our lives. In Luke's story, there's an assumption that the 72 are people of peace. And so a challenge to us all to, to ponder, to wonder, are we people ourselves filled with 
that peace? And how might we take time to know that peace in our own lives, that peace of God beyond all human understanding? 70 or 72, different translations alter the, the number slightly. And there might be some symbolism in 70 or 72 being the, the number of nations in the world that there were considered to be in biblical times. Nowadays, around about 200 nations in the world. And so often the places of a breakdown of peace are at the boundaries, the borders between nations. Our moderator, Ian Greenshields, was due to be joining with the Archbishop of Canterbury and the, the Pope in a, a peace mission to South Sudan. And there's a, a video message, uh, an open message to the people of South Sudan that you can see on the, the church Facebook feed and elsewhere. Now, not all of us are called to that kind of peace mission. But we're all called to be people of peace and to share that peace. The serenity prayer, the words from American theologian Reinhold Niebuhr, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. There are many things, many situations that fill us with with great concern and we wonder what we can do to bring about peace there and maybe there's a sense in which we we accept that we acknowledge it and we focus our attention on on our circle of influence where we can make a difference and bring peace the 72 in our gospel story were sent out to, to neighbouring towns and villages to eat and drink and create community where they were welcomed, modelling kingdom communities, that alternate lifestyle that God was ushering in. The kingdom of God is near you, the second part of the message that Jesus invited others to take. The kingdom of God is near you. An alternate reality, a different way rather than the ways of the world. Our Old Testament story parallels nicely with that. I was saying to a colleague recently, thinking about this passage, I'm not sure I could pull together 72 folk in our sparsely populated um, <laughs> low number churches around here. And he said, it's not just about the 72. He sent them out in pairs. I'll settle for two. And actually, if you include the Old Testament story, there's a story about the power of the one. The one Israelite slave girl, the girl who had been taken into captivity in, in Syria. And there, against all human expectation, is concern for the well-being of one that might have been considered an enemy. But she's the catalyst to peace in Naaman's life. It just takes the one. 
to take that message of peace, to take the kingdom values. She was able to want good things for those that others would have said were her enemies. That's kingdom thinking. That's living with peace and wisdom, wanting the best for all. The disciples, the uh, 72 that had been sent out, well, they were disciples, <laughs> not the 12, the 72 now. And they came back and they were filled with joy. They had been doing even greater things than they had imagined. Were sent out with a message of peace to heal the sick and to proclaim that the kingdom of God is near. Not to take too much with them to rely on God's providing. They came back overjoyed, for in God's strength they had achieved so much more than they had imagined. And that possibility is for each one of us. Could we muster together a, a crowd of 72? <laughs> Two will do. One will do. Could it be you? Could it be me? Who imagines how this week, imagine, imagine what a message of peace for someone else might look like. A conversation, a word of encouragement. You know, in you I see so much generosity. In you I see the love of God. What an encouragement that could be for someone. Imagine. Imagine what sharing a message of peace might mean for you this week. And then just imagine a wee bit more. And then turn the imaginings into action as you share the message of peace, as you usher in the kingdom of God's reality. Amen. God bless you all. And know the peace, the peace of God beyond all human understanding, keeping guard over your hearts and minds. Loving God, into the reality of inequality, pain, fear, hurt and greed, your light shines, piercing every dark place, offering hope and joy to the lost and love to the whole world. Today we pray for the whole world your entire creation as it continues to face seemingly insurmountable challenges around climate change, war, inequality, poverty and disease. Help all of us and all those with the will, the power and the strength to do so, to make changes, large and small, to make the lives of all better. As our country and community continue to be plagued with problems and struggles, we pray for all of those on the edges and the margins, the poor, the homeless, the despised, the excluded, the grieving and the broken. Help each of us to take up your challenge of unquenchable love. In this time of steep uncertainty in your church, as we strive to do your work in ever more challenging environments, we pray that your presence will always be felt and that in all things we will first strive to serve you. As we each face our own challenges in our lives and those who we, and of those we love, 
we each bring our own prayers in silence. Merciful God, each of us gathered here brings our own weaknesses and pains. We feel ourselves challenged by the world and by your word. Help us to face these challenges and to always try. In Jesus' name, Amen. We bring our offerings, recalling past service, future intention and possibilities. We come to you, our God, offering our whole selves to your mission and work and giving our time, talent and treasure as signs of our commitment to the life of faith, discipleship, adventure and service. And all our prayers we bring together as we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
worship has ended. And as we go and return to the things that await us in our own and different worlds, may we all know of God's blessing from Father, Son and Holy Spirit with us throughout this week and always. Amen.